Last year, Veterans Affairs Secretary Eric Shinseki was forced to resign after it was revealed that some veterans had died while waiting for care at VA facilities in Arizona and elsewhere. In a moment, I'm going to be joined by the new Veterans Affairs Secretary, Robert McDonald, for his first Sunday show interview. But first, our special correspondent, Tom Brokaw, has been investigating the plight of homeless veterans in Los Angeles. Every two years, an army of volunteers fans across greater Los Angeles... So we're just out doing the count tonight? ...to count the homeless. And more than one in ten is a veteran. Every person is important. But when it comes to a homeless veteran, they're somebody who went above and beyond and gave sacrifices that none of the rest of us will ever understand. Los Angeles long has had the largest population of homeless veterans in the country, even though many get a cool reception. It wasn't always that way. In 1888, 300 acres of land were given to the federal government to be permanently maintained as a national home for disabled volunteer soldiers. A VA facility was established, but much of what became 387 acres were leased to outside interests, having nothing to do with the veterans. And the land became some of the priciest and most coveted in California. Neighborhoods such as Brentwood and Westwood closed in. Veterans like James Carr, homeless for more than a year, see a raw deal. They don't care about any of this. They, they want to take this property and turn it into what they want. In 2011, a class action lawsuit was filed to force the government to honor the original deed. The vets had a powerful ally and attorney, Ron Olson. Well, you've got politicians going around the country saying it's not right for these young men and women to go abroad and fight for their country and then have to come home and fight for a roof over their head, and yet these same politicians don't make something happen? That's hypocrisy. Olson and his coalition felt they had a slam dunk case, but the Department of Justice disagreed, arguing the agency was within its rights to lease out land meant for the veterans. I thought it would, once it was brought to light, that something would happen, and I was wrong. Former Santa Monica City Councilman Bobby Shriver found many of his wealthy and powerful neighbors turned against him when he advocated housing homeless veterans here. And many of the state's most prominent Democratic leaders were nowhere to be found. Were you surprised by the pushback? Um... Yeah, I was. I, I hesitate to say yes because it makes me sound so naive. Because, of course, I thought guys are in the girls, by the way, women vets are in the dumpster. These are empty buildings. Let's put them in the empty buildings. I thought, who could be against that? And yet I found many people were. But just two weeks ago, a breakthrough. We're moving forward together, designing a plan to end homelessness among veterans in Los Angeles County. The new VA secretary, Robert McDonald, a West Point graduate, announced an agreement to settle the lawsuit. Have a good the day. two sides moving from adversaries Thanks, to potential partners in a matter of weeks. Those are Veterans uh, like Robert Malone, formerly homeless himself, saying it's about time. For crying out loud, we're Americans. Let's, let's help our guys since the minute, man. We've been protecting our country. You know, let's protect them now. Joining me now is the new Veterans Affairs Secretary, Robert McDonald, in his first Sunday show interview. The Secretary, thanks for coming on Meet the Press. Thank you, Chuck. It's great to be with you. Uh, let me start with a basic question about the story uh, that Tom just did on the homeless veterans issue. I, I know you've been hands-on on it. Why did it take a lawsuit to get this solved? I don't know the question. I don't know the answer to the question, Chuck. Um, I think, uh, I think the, from my point of view, as soon as I learned about this, I felt like this was something we had to solve. Um, I, uh, I've known the Shriver family for a number of years. I was involved in Special Olympics in the early 1980s uh, with the family, and I helped move Special Olympics around the world when I was CEO of the Procter & Gamble Company. Um, I knew of Ron Olson through um, friends, mutual friends, and so I, I, I made a phone call. Uh, they, they made a phone call back, and I knew we were aligned on the mission, which is taking care of veterans. All right, how quickly can we see... L.A., largest homeless veteran population in the country. How quickly are we going to see these homeless yes. veterans with temporary housing? Uh, As you know, we announced, we announced uh, the agreement that we were supposed to get done this week. Um, and as a result of that, uh, we're moving ahead right now. We're, we're putting in more uh, vouchers, more hand vouch vouchers that will get people into housing. Uh, on the property itself, we have buildings which are vacant. Um, we need to do some seismic work on some of the buildings. Um, they're, they're not.
not safe for another okay. should something happen. But we're moving full speed. Could you erect temporary housing, tents, and things like that? We can. We're looking at all the options. There, nothing's taken off the table. The, the, the critical piece is we need to end veteran homelessness by the end of 2015. That's right. been the President's commitment. That's my commitment. We're moving full speed ahead. Well, I understand that, and it's already an extension of a year of the original goal. As you know, you're in the Office of Inspector General for the VA. The, the issue of the homeless call center, 40,500 missed opportunities where the call center either didn't refer homeless veterans to medical facilities or other or take care of their problems. And I know you've made it. You give out your private cell phone number. I have given out my private oh, cell phone number. I'm glad you're doing it. Is it trickling down? What about this call center? You can be responsive. What about the call center? Well, it's not just trickling down. We're making fundamental changes in the department uh, in terms of leadership. Uh, we have um, we've hold, held accountable about 900 employees who are no longer with us that were with us before before I became secretary. What does held accountable mean? Have you fired them? 900 people have been fired okay. since I became secretary. All right. So. Uh, we've got 60 people that we fired who have manipulated wait times. Mm -hmm. We've got about 100 senior leaders who are under investigation now whose performance reviews have been deferred until we get feedback from. Uh, the IG and Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. So we're holding people accountable. You know, look, we're nine months since this scandal erupted uh, at the VA. The GAO, General uh, Accounting, of uh, Accounting Office, Accountability Office, named uh, parts of the VA high risk. Uh, and they identified the following, the weaknesses in VA management, ambiguous policies, inconsistent processes, inadequate oversight and accountability, information technology challenges, inadequate training for VA staff, unclear resource needs and allocation priorities. It's interesting to me that you come from the private sector. If you took over a company like this, that company would have been in bankruptcy, would it not? I have as bad it. as the VA looks right now when you read all this? I met with the, um, uh, with the Comptroller General uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago and actually encouraged him to put us on the high-risk list. Why? We're a healthcare system. We're one of the largest businesses in this country. We have a budget which is nearly $170 billion. Uh, we run a lot of hospitals, over 150 hospitals. Uh, I want to be on that list. I want to shine light on what we're doing. I want to improve, and that's what we're working to do with our plan called My VA. Wait times are down 18% nationally. Our backlog of disability claims are down 61% nationally. Homelessness is down 33% nationally. We're making progress. As you know, you're now, uh, you're now being treated like a politician on the hot seat these days and the job you took. And you were on Capitol Hill this week, and you got in a bit of a heated exchange. Let me play it here with uh, Republican Congressman Mike Hoffman. I think that that's just characteristic of your glossing over the extraordinary problems confronted by your department. Actually, uh, I've been here six months. You've been here longer than I have. If there's a problem in Denver, I think you own it more than I do. I'll give you my cell phone tonight, and you can answer some of the calls and see if I'm making a difference for veterans and see what they say. I run a large company, sir. The fundamental the challenge. Now, Congressman Coffin put out another statement in response, uh, and this is what he said. Let me start by telling you something I haven't done. I have never run a federal agency that tolerates corruption the way the VA has. I've never built a hospital that's years behind schedule and hundreds of millions over budget, and I've never been a shill for inept bureaucrats who allowed American heroes to die on a medical waiting list while waiting for medical service. This is the most arrogant administration in our lifetime. Most would apologize for a scandal committed against our military service men and women. This administration is seemingly incapable of feeling shame. You were pretty ticked off at him. He's pretty ticked off at you. Uh, was that an appropriate uh, back and forth that you guys are having? Well, I think if you looked at the entire uh, hearing, mm -hmm. what you'd find is tremendous uh, unanimity, bipartisan support for what we're trying to do and what veterans are trying to do. That was our budget hearing. You think he's being unfair? And we, well, what I'm saying is uh, there was tremendous unanimity. Everybody is for veterans. Chairman Miller, the chairman of the committee, went around the room and asked even the veteran service organizations if they've seen a change and everybody everybody to a person x1 said they've seen a change we're not where we need to be yet i'm not saying that what i'm saying is we're making progress we're moving in the right direction i'm curious can you run a government agency like a business People i think you talk can. about it can you really do that i think you can in fact that's the proposition we're testing um i'm so determined to do this you're I determined am. to take png ideas or ideas that you ran a company procter and gamble and apply them here to I'm determined to take business practices and apply them to government and make them work. And I think so far with what we've done, the changes we've made, the improvements we've seen, it works. The movie American Sniper, this has really hit home for a lot of them. It's great, great movie. I was just going to say, uh, what's the important message that you think folks should take away from the movie and the story that it tells about the plight of veterans when they come home? 
I'm hoping that this will help raise the consciousness of the need for mental health professionals, mental health treatments in the general public. We see that need at VA. We're the canary in the coal mine, but it's, it's a national need. Secretary McDonald, you run an agency that everybody is rooting to succeed. Thank so good you, luck Chuck. to you, sir. Thank Thanks you very for much, and thanks for your help. You got it. Thank you. And when we come back, we've got a special treat, a little fun here. 40 years of Saturday Night Live with none other than Dana Carter. Well, George Bush Sr. here. Read my lips. Meet the press coming back. No new channels. You suffer from aching heels and feet? Oh, Is stepping out of bed in the morning torture? Plantar fasciitis, heel spurs, and aches.